Psalms. Okay, good morning, class. So today we're looking at cycle test three of 2022 in preparation of your upcoming cycle test. Okay, so the paper was for one hour, 50 marks. The question says the graphs of G of X and H of X, where H of X is defined as, I'm going to write it here, H of X is defined as minus 2x plus 2. I drawn below. The graph of H of X cuts the x axis at 1, which, which is indicated there, and the graph of G of X at neg 4 and negative 6, which is also indicated there. Negative 4 and negative 10 is also a point on the graph. The graph G of X has an x intercept at 6. And A, so that one is not known. The turning point at 2 and. Okay, so everything else is on the diagram. You all okay with that? Right. People, this is how, it, how, you, how the graphs come in, as you can see in the exams. A bit different to what you were exposed to, not so. That's why people always say, now they know what's going on in class, but when it comes to exam. Yes. Right. To overcome that, you must do a lot of past papers. And that's what we're doing. Yeah? The question says, determine the coordinates of A. The question paper and memo can be found in the description box below. Okay, so A. People, very similar to the one we did yesterday. What do we need? We need to know what the x of symmetry is. Which is x is equal to 2. So from there to there, from 2 to, to 6, what is that distance? 4. So I'm going 4 in this direction. So what's the value for A? Negative 2. Can you see that, people? Have I answered the question? No. What's the coordinates of A? Negative 2 and 0. Okay. Next question. 1.2. One point two, we are asked to write down the range of the graph of G. The range. We, what is range? Four possible y values. Does this graph exist at negative infinity? No, we it's not existing at negative eight onwards. Not so. In other words, y must be greater than negative eight. Does the graph exist at negative eight? Yes, so it's equal as well. Not so. 1.3, determine the average gradient of the graph of G, which is the? No, no, it's the parabola. Not so. And it's between 4 and 6. Between 4 and 6. Now what is this? Look here, 4. Okay, I see now why they ask this. 4 and 6. Because we can know the, the, the coordinates of both. Not so. So we know that f of 4 is actually minus 6. And f of 6 is? What's your y value here? Zero. Can you see that? So what we do is for the average gradient, it's the same as we do gradient. Not so. It's just f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If we don't know this, no problem. We just apply the gradient. Gradient formula. You guys understand? So it's going to be simply 0 minus minus 6 over 6 minus 4. Or I could have said minus 6 minus 0 over 4 minus 6. Same thing. Gives me an answer of 6 over 2, which is 3. So what does that mean if the question says? To interpret that, it means to say that the graph is increasing at a rate of 3 per unit, or just 3. You guys understand? Let's go to the next question. What is the equation of H? Um, what will the equation of H become? Now, what is the current equation of H? Negative 2x plus 2. Okay, it's going to take us 
Start up here. One point four. What is the what will the equation of H become if the graph is moved one unit to the left? Moved one unit to the left. So if it moves one unit to the left, I must add on the x, not so? Because they are speaking about the equation now. In yesterday's question, they spoke about the turning point. So when it moved to the left, you had to subtract it. But now they're talking about the equation. So it must be the additive inverse on your x. So the graph, what will it become? If the graph of 1 into the left, so it must become, x becomes x plus 1. Okay? So h of x is no more h of x. Oh, I could have said h of x plus 1 equals negative 2 into x plus 1 plus 2, which is now negative 2x minus 2 plus 2, which is negative 2x, which also makes sense, people. We take this graph and move it 1 into the left. What's going to happen? It's going to go through the origin with that same gradient. Does it make sense? Beautiful sum there. Then again, all the sums are beautiful. Right, next, find the equation of g of x. Right, another sum here. Right, there's two more. For four marks, find the equation of g of x. Right, now there's always, uh, there's one of two ways we can, but I can do the sum. It's either using the curly point method or the, the x intercepts. Because I got both here, I can do either or. But because the original function or the original graph, not the graph, the, the, the uh, original, the question gave to a negative 8. So say for arguments like that was wrong, then the equation will be wrong. You understand? So I normally, to the, to the, to the best of my ability, use with what is given to us. But like I said, you could have used any one of the two. Okay. So um, I'm going to go with the turning point. So y is equal to a into x minus 3 squared plus q. So what is my p and q value? 2 and negative 8 respectively. So y is equal to a into x minus 2 squared minus 8. So it must all be solved here. A. So I'm going to substitute. Um, I can go with many points, no? 4 and minus 6, 6 and 0, or negative 2 and 0. Again, I would use what is given to me. Okay, yes? Negative 4 and 10 as well, no? nice. Good. So it's going to be, uh, I'm going to go with 6 and 0. So x and the y. So 0 is equal to a into 6 minus 2 squared minus 8. Take 8 over becomes positive 8. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So it's, no. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So A gives us R. Not so? So therefore my equation now leads Y is equal to R half into X minus 2 squared minus 8. And of course I always multiply the story out. So it's going to give you a half x squared, that times that is going to be 4x. In the negative times the half is going to be negative 2x. It's going to be negative four, uh, positive 4, 2, minus 6. Which means to say, what about this point? This is actually symmetrical about the point of uh, your, your axis of symmetry. Can you see it? Why? Because right from me I can see my uh, y intercept. This is going to be minus 6 here. So what do we notice? The same y value here. If that y values are the same, it's actually reflected in the x of symmetry line, which is the x is equal to um, 2. The x of symmetry is x equal to 2. Okay. Next. I'm going to write this equation here. And this is the equation of? Uh, g of x, no? Okay, g of x, this equation is 
Oh, it's good. Did you give this a squid? Yes. You mustn't let me know if I make a mistake. Okay. Number three. For which values of x is j of x over h of x greater than equal to zero? Do what does greater than equal to zero mean? Must be positive. When must something be positive? Or under what condition? When we are dividing, are the numbers positive? One positive, both positive, or both negative. Right, so now, we need something positive if it's above this line. Not so, where is it negative? It's below the line. So, both must be above or both must be below. Coming from the negative infinity side, what do we notice? Looking from on top. Do you put the eyelashes? Right, looking from on top, what do you notice? Both is on top. Can you see it? From here? Both is on top, not so? Yes. So, which point? So a negative two. Can you see that? From negative two onwards, what do we notice? One is at the top, one is below. So which point? So we still here. Going in that direction. Both is on top. No? Yes. What do we notice here? One is on top, one is below. Not so. Looking from on top. What do you notice at zero? One's on top, one is below. Below what? This x axis. Will you notice that one? Both is? Below. So both is negative. So which point? It happens all the way to? Six. six. Both is below, as you can see here. Okay? What do you notice for, uh, uh, beyond six? One is above and one is below. You see that? So let's write that as an inequality, inequality. So we say x must be, that direction must be less than negative 2. Or, it's a continuous solution from 1 to 6. Not so. x is greater than um, 1, but less than 6. Okay. Now, coming here, what do you notice? Equal sign. Can the denominator be equal to 0? No. So what is h? h is a straight line. Can the straight line be zero? No. no. So they must not be an equal sign. Can the parabola be zero? Can g of x be zero? Yes. So that's in your numerator. So it can be equal at the minus two. Can it be equal at the six? Yes. yes. And there we go. So we omit that. Okay. Because the straight line well, h of x can never be zero, otherwise the sum will be undefined. Okay. Beautiful sum. Determine the equation of the graph sketch below in the form of y equals. Alright, so let's go. So this is your horizontal asymptote, not so, which is negative 2. This is your vertical asymptote, which is negative 1. So my equation now reads y is equal to x, uh, uh, a over x plus 1 minus 2. I always check this. x plus 1 is equal to 0, x equal to minus 1? Yes. There we go. That one is right. So there's always a uh, confusion here. No? The learner tell me, now they can see it must be. Um, uh, the denominator can't be my x can't be minus one, but it just couldn't. You just check. If it is that you had the written minus here, then you make it a plus. You you be in line with what is going on here. Okay, because sometimes they put a plus p there, and sometimes put a minus p. There. Okay. If you want to solve for a, what do I do? I solve a point that's lying on this graph. Not so. So let's solve. It's going to be zero and three. That's the x and the y. So 3 is equal to a over 0 plus 1 minus 2. They get over the equal sign becomes 5. So a is equal to 5. Equation 
y is equal to 5 over x plus 1 minus 2. Okay. You guys understand? Right. Next. 2.2. An exponential graph with the equation y is equal to 4 times a to the x plus p plus q has the following properties. It has a domain of x is the element of r. Okay. The range is y is greater than negative 8. Just remember your exponential graph is either going to look like that like that, like this, or like that. Not so. X in element of R, it's all of those. Okay, remember this is your, your Y is equal to Q line. Eh? It's not your X axis. This is your horizontal asymptote. You have been told that the, the range is Y is in element of R, while Y is greater than 8, negative 8. Which means to say this here is negative 8. So, is it above negative 8 or below? Above. Above. So, that must be more than negative 8. So, you're omitting those two. This is increasing or decreasing? Huh? Increasing. This here? Decreasing. Decreasing. You guys understand? And it's passing through 3 and 8. I say, hang on. He has a y, oh, y is equal to minus 6. Okay, so that is minus 60. Not so. Now, if I draw this graph, that's y is equal to minus 8. The graph is doing that at minus 6, or the graph is doing that at, mi at minus 6. One of the two. Now, if you look at 3 and 8, x is 3, y is 8. Is it going to be A or B? B? It has to be B. Because if this is positive 3, it has to be B. So it's an increasing function. Do you see how I do the process of elimination now? It has to be B. Because if you're going, 3 does lie on the graph, definitely. However, it's going to have a negative Y value. Can you see that? So if I draw this graph, this is what I was looking for. The, the, the learner to do. Y is equal to minus 8. One mark. The graph is going through minus 6. The second mark. The shape of the graph. The third mark. And x is 3, y is 8. The plot that point on here for the fourth. You guys understand? I can't make it any easier than this. Okay. 2.3? Probably I put it No? Is that the last question? Yeah. 2.3. Probability. A box of pins. Contains three red pins, two black pins, one green pin. Two pins are taken from the box at random. Calculate the probability that both pins taken from the box are the same color. So let's draw a three diagrams. It's going to be the easiest to represent. Okay. So we got red, black, green. How many reds? Three. Sounds like a teacher's box of pins, okay. Then, two black and one green. So, if the first pin drawn was a red pin, red, blue, black, and um, green, sorry, red, blue, green, red, blue, green. If we take out the first pin, and the first pin is red, What's the pro how many pins are left in the box? Five. 
How many rain pins are there? Two. So the probability for rain? Two out of five. Probability for black? Two out of five. Probability of green? One out of five. If the first pin was blue, you drew on your first throw. What's the probability of rain? Three out of five. Blue? One out of five. Green? One out of five. If your first pin was green, red, 3 out of 5, blue, 2 out of 5, green, you would agree with that? So, the question says both are the same color. So, it's going to be probability of red, red, plus the probability of blue, blue, black, black, sorry, plus the probability of Green, green. Of course, that's not going to work. Why? Because there's 0 over 5 in the, in the second row. So if you want, you can write 1 over 6 times 0 over 5, or you would have left it out. So I know it's going to be 0 anyway. Blue, blue. It's 2 out of 6. Multiplied by 1 out of 5. Read, read. 3 out of 6 times 2 out of 5. Three out of six times two over five plus two over six times one over five plus one over six times we can also it out zero over five. So you four over fifteen. Is that correct? Yes. Or you can write it as a decimal, which is zero comma two six seven or you can write it as 26,67%. Okay, it's all the same. Three point two. You know, we are told that if B is 0, 0,2 and B is 0, 0,6, calculate A or B if A and B are mutually exclusive. What does that mean? There's no overlap. So we've got A and B. They are mutually exclusive. They are both. Okay? So for 3.2.1, it's simply going to be the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B. You can put the, the full um, formula, which is minus probability of A intersection B. But because there's no overlap, there's no intersection, there's going to be zero anyway. Okay? So the probability of A, 0 0.2 plus 0, 0.6, which is 0, 0.8. Let's look at 3.2.2. A and B are independent. For independent events, What do we know about independent events? The probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of So, to work that out, the probability of A or B is simply going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A intersection B. You see, this now can be calculated using that. Of course there is an overlap. Okay? So what's the probability of A? 0, 0,2. The probability of B? 0, 0,6. Minus 0, 0,2 times 0, 0,6. Times 
C'est une petite navette, tu ne dis pas. Vous êtes connecté Hmm? Not correct. What's the answer? Sorry? I would say the answer is not right. That, that is right. Okay. Oh, you said it right. Okay, nice. Thank you. Okay. People, as I said, you can put it in any uh, form. Okay. Or you can write it as 60. Let's see. Okay. People, 3.3? What? 3.3? There are 180 girls in grade 11 at a school. So what does that mean? Definitely this is going to go in a Venn diagram. <coughs> so here they are, 180 girls. And so I was conducted to see how many girls prefer um, Gatsby Day, Cake Day or Movie Day. Which days would you prefer? Gatsby, you guys are greedy. So by you guys can speak. Why would I buy you guys? <laughs> we bought a grade 12 because they finished the syllabus. So when you guys are grade 12 and you survived, I <laughs> mean, you know, maybe one day we can buy for you guys. Okay. Okay, so we got the Gatsby Day, cake, and the movie. Okay. The following information was recorded. 114 girls preferred a Gatsby Day, which means to say that plus that plus that plus that is 114. You all agree with that? Yes. Anyway, all 32 prefer a movie day. It's 32, that, 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 and that's 32. 75 preferred cake. That, 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 75. 12 like all three. That's my kind of girl. I also like one. <laughs> 13 girls like Gatsby and movie days. 13 girls, Gatsby and movie. So 13 is going to be this and that. So how many like Gatsby and movies only? One. Can you see that, people? So I just put this in blue because it's derived, it's, um, derived from the... 30, uh, 24 likes movies and cake. 24 likes movies and cake. 12 is accounted for. So, 12 likes movies and cake only. 10 girls do not like any of the above. What's wrong with these girls? You're going to be on the outside. Let the number of girls who like cats be day and cake day only be X. So these the X. You will see that people. <coughs> now we are told to draw a Venn diagram, so I'm halfway through already. <coughs> so what can be calculated here still? So that is 32, so that's 25. What's 32 minus 25? Seven. seven. So seven likes, movies only. Okay? So, I mean like cake only. So for the cake only, plus 12 plus 12 plus x gives an answer of 75. If they get over the equal sign, so cake only is going to be 75 minus 24. Work it out. Huh? 60. 51, yeah. Minus x. Let's check again. It's uh, 24, yeah. So this here is 51 minus x. Is it wrong? 75 minus 12 minus 12. Sorry? Is it right? Okay. You all, you all understand it? Right? Let's go with cat's piece only. So hungry now. Plus x plus 
12 plus 1 adds up to? 114. They get over the equal signs, the gadget is only? So they give you 114 minus x minus 12 minus 1. What's 114 minus 12 minus 1? Sorry? 101. 101 minus 6. Okay. That's how far we got for that information. Okay. People, we could solve for x at this point, but I think that's the next question. If it's not, I would just solve x the one time. Three point three point two. Determine the number of girls who like Gatsby Day and Cape Day, but not Movie Day. Gatsby Day, Cape Day, but not Movie. So, in other words, what are we doing here? We're solving for x. Not so. So that would simply be. We take this whole story here, and this adds up to what? What does all this Gatsby parts adds up to? 140. I could have said 101 minus x plus z plus z. Then you will still get 140. So it's going to be 114 plus 51 minus x plus 12 plus 7 plus 10 is equal to 180. You see that? You take x that side and the numbers on that side. So what you're going to have now is 114 plus 51 plus 12 plus 7 plus 10 minus 180 gives you 14. So x works out to be 14. You all agree with that? Which now means to say that can be calculated. Okay, 51 minus 14. What's 51 minus 14? Remember that's 14. 51 minus 14? 37. And what's 101 minus 14? Sorry? 87. 87. Is that correct? Just check at the back. Remember? You got this problem. Is it not right? It's not What's the value for x? 14. 14. That's right. There's no way I could have gotten 14 with the wrong values. Okay. 3.3.3. You must see, not accept everything I tell you to be right. 3.3.3 Determine the probability that the girl in grade 11 selected at random chooses movie day only. Movie day only is? 7. Not so. So probability of movie only is going to be 7 over I'm sure 7 can't go into 180 without remaining. Okay, so that's going to be this. Is that correct? Yes. I've also got a question. You guys haven't done this yet, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to follow. Question 4, we are told that in the diagram alongside, because they've been below, quadrilateral PQRS. PQRS. Quadrilateral is a four-sided figure, represent a plot of land. Q is 100, P is 33, 
P1 is 33, P2 is 80, PS is 30, and uh, PQ is 39. The question says, determine the following and calculate the following. Number one, the length of PR. At the same time, you'll see what is coming next. Okay. What's the next topic we're going to do? Did I tell you what it is? Finance, okay, and then this will probably follow that. But for four marks, the question says calculate the length of PR. So if you're looking at PR, PR. So if you look at what we have in this triangle, we have too little information to calculate PR. Okay. However, in this triangle here, we have two lengths and a side. So it's definitely uh, two um, angles and a side. So it's definitely signable. So we're going to say sine of Q over PR is equal to sine of P1 over QR, which is equal to sine of R2 over uh, PQ. Okay. So we need to have a known ratio. So I need to call the know what R2 is. Okay, because I believe that would be your known ratio. And that is what I want to calculate. So I'm going to use um, sine of Q over PR. And I can use R2 over. So it's those two ratios I can use. We will use two of the three normally. Okay? So it's going to be sine of Q, which is 10. i uh, sorry, which is 100. Again, I need to work out R2 first. However, this is going to give you sum of triangles. So it's 180 minus 100 minus... 33. 47. Sorry? 47. 47. So that means to say sine of angle Q, which is 100, over PR, is what we're calculating, equals sine of R2, which is 47, over PQ, which is 39. Cross multiply, that one is going to go up. That's going to go up, and that's going to come down. So in other words, it's going to be PR sine 47 is equal to 39 sine 100. And divided by sine 47 both sides. So PR will tell me 39 sine 100 over sine 47. Just check if that's correct. 552,52. And uh, meters. Also, this year you, you could have seen uh, PR over sine Q is equal to PQ over sine R2, okay, which is the same as this year. It will take you one step less in solving for, um, for PR. Okay. That's number 4.1. Let's go with 4.2. 4.2, they probably ask you to calculate is R. So you've got two lengths and you the angle, which will result in the positive. Yes, is R. So the positive rule, as we said, is two lengths and included the angle. So we're going to say is R squared is equal to. This is another slide that we put you. Okay. Is R squared is equal to. Um, uh, PS squared plus PR squared minus 2 PS times PR sine of P2. So uh, PS is going to be 30 squared plus 52.52 squared minus 2 times 30 times 52.52 sine of 80. squared plus now 52,52 squared was the last answer calculated squared minus 2 times 30 uh, answer sine oh sorry cos my mistake must be cos no? the cos rule frames are sine did I say sine earlier or no cos
is 3110,74. The square root thereof is going to give you 45,77. Just check with that screen. Okay, so that's 10 art learners can you please report to the reception area? Great 10 art learners to report. So it's triangle PSR. It's PSR. To calculate PSR, we need two lengths and an included angle, which we have there. Did you include an angle? So the area is going to be half PS times PR sine of P2. So it's going to be half PS, it's going to be 30. PR is 52.52, sine of 80. So it's going to be a half times 30 times 52.52, sine of 80. Is that 70? 775? Comma? 80. Units, so in this case, we need to score. Okay. The bonus question, which you guys normally leave out. A circle has a diameter. So a circle has a diameter of 4x plus 12. The area of the circle is. So how do you calculate the area? is um, pi r squared. But uh, your, your, your diameter is 4x plus 12. So your radius is going to be 4x plus 12 divided by 2, which is 2x plus 6. So you're going to go with the area, which is pi r squared. So it's going to be pi 2x plus 6 squared. That is nothing. However, I need to multiply the story out, and I should get that. Okay. So you're going to be pi into 4x squared. That times that is 12 times 2 is 24x. Plus the last term squared, which is 36. Which is 4 pi x squared plus 24 pi x plus 36 pi. So we lose one of those. 4 x squared plus 24 is 8. Yes. Yeah, A is the correct answer. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of cycle of this three of 2022. The question paper and memo can be found in this description box below.